time to deal with what's going to happen when it starts getting cold. And this is a heater, diesel heater, that can produce 8 kilowatt of heat power. So this is great for wintertime, protecting you, especially if you're in an RV like me. If you want to route it into a garage, you can pipe out the exhaust. But anyway, we're going to open this up. And then I'm going to walk you through setting it up and it's manual. Looks like it walks through all the different this and some of the safety material about the burning diesel and all that and all the different adapters and stuff. That's good. So it looks like we got an exhaust pipe, some clamps, connection for the uh, battery, a protective hose to install over the exhaust pipe, and a little muffler. Looks like the last piece here is the actual unit itself. I'm just going to pick it up out of here and slide this over here. Wow, it's kind of small actually. Another little box here. I'm not sure what this one is. Oh, just duct connectors. And let's take a look inside here. Remote control, air controller. And then on this side, got a, an adapter for, oh, it's got an adapter for 120 volts. Got the adapter for 12 volt, 24 volts. So I guess it honors all of them. And this is the, the thermostat. This appears to be working perfectly. This would be a great addition to a garage. I am going to connect it over here to the solar shed and route it underneath one of these so that when it gets cold out here, I can just pull this up in there and route that up through one of the holes in the floor and warm this shed up so that I can work during the winter. And uh, it's going to be extremely easy uh, to route the air out of here into the, the shed. Or I may, alt to do it the other way around, I may mount it over in this corner over here and just vent it right out of that corner hole. And that way I don't have to worry about keeping it out of the rain or anything like that. It can just vent that exhaust right out and it would just take a really small hole right there in the edge of this shed. It's, it's the shed's made up of aluminum also. It would be perfect for that. So it's as simple as that. Um, I've got the remote control here now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it back up and see if it turns back on. So I turned it back up to 85. And let's see if that, oh, there it goes. You see it ramping up the effort that it's putting into it. Um, my guess is once that furnace turns on and that diesel starts to burn again, that, that that meter shows way up there at max. I hear it starting to ramp up again. I'm assuming that is the exhaust fan. It is. That's the air coming out of this, uh, the heat coming out of this vent here. And there's very little coming out of the diesel chamber yet, but it is blowing. So it does look like it's probably about to start. Let's just see if we can see what happens when it does start. Get you a good enough view here where we can see that. Okay, I hear the chamber coming on. Now I did press the on button. Oh, there it goes. You can hear it. I don't see the artwork changing any, but you can definitely hear it humming. And there's a lot of exhaust coming out, and it is very hot. probably means it's cycling up air coming out of the front here is warm it's not super hot as that chamber gets warm and now this air coming out over here is getting really good and warm as it ramps up the whole thing although surprisingly it hasn't shown the level here of going up to that level yet. My guess is, is that it's heating that chamber up hot enough to be able to support that amount of air coming out of the front here, where there is already a good amount of airflow coming out the front. It is very good and hot and warm, really hot air coming out now. So the heating part of this is working very well.
definitely. Uh, okay, there it goes. Now it's showing the chamber up to temperature is what I'm assuming that means. And it continues to produce good hot air coming out of here, but the burn of it has really died down. The hot air coming out of the exhaust, though, is extremely hot. You can even see it starting to damage the grass there. It is so warm. So that hot air from the exhaust is something to be respected. Well, it is safe to say that this thing is working very well. It's producing large quantities of heat, and there should be no problem moving this over into the shed. So based on that, I am going to shut it down, and it is starting to get late, dark out here. And after uh, another day or so, if I don't have any rain tomorrow, I'll be able to get over there and get this installed. And we can hook it up and show you the final installation. All right, we're going to finish this, even though it's rainy outside. It is just been one of those years. Now, it's not super rainy today, but it is still wet out here. So I'm just going to throw this this work mat down where I have a place to do this without getting dirty knees and all filthied up. So I don't know about you, but the I'm always looking for cool ways to, to heat my shed in the winter. And, and I told you I was going to install it in my shed. I was even looking at possibly doing it in the RV. But I decided against the RV because of the weird nature of the way the mounts would work and the way I had to put it into the RV to get it to work safely. So I decided against it. But that said, the shed is still the perfect place because during the winter, it gets cool enough out here that I need something to help keep me warm so that I can still use the shed in the winter. So this gives me a perfect opportunity to, to build it. And for those of you who have solar sheds or even have your solar equipment located in a solar shed, this is kind of a good setup for you. I, am, I also decided, I did test it on just some raw 12 volt batteries. In the directions, there's an odd comment that says something about do not charge, do not disconnect power from operating at high temperatures. This can cause backfires due to high temperatures repeatedly can, can cause permanent damage, which that makes perfect sense. Um, do not cut power immediately. Wait until the internal heat comes down to dispel all the heat because my guess is the fan continues running after it's uh, done in order to keep it from cooling off. Um, it says, the power supply of the diesel heater must have the following requirements voltage 12 to 24 volts current greater than 12 amps now greater than or equal to 12 amps which probably means around 144 watts when it first starts up it does at one point go in to say that it gets um, up to high amperage when it first starts and that's probably to keep the to keep the heating elements until it's warm enough to run on its own um, either from direct source or a battery when powered by a battery, do not charge the battery while using the heater as insufficient current can cause a malfunction. Ensure a film and secure connection, sorry, ensure a firm and secure connection to the battery using clamps to fix it to the, will cause it to have a bad connection, which basically means use the cable that they provide you to connect it directly to a battery, which is what I did and I tested this. This does work just fine. Uh, but because I have no reason to use it on a battery and the cable is, is fairly long, my inverter sits right inside and it's on all the time anyway. And this thing uses such low power, regardless if it's using the 12 volt or the inverter. I already pay the inverter cost, so I'm going to go ahead and do it that way. So what I decided to do here is run the heat duct into the shed and up into it like this and run the exhaust in this direction here let me just kind of show you what i'm talking about because the one thing that it talks about is having a fear of is that the input of this 
would go back in through the intake of the of the heater and go through the intake here and back into the shed. And that is while they offer you the detection device that's mounted over here on the side. And what I will do uh, at some point is pull this in up in there and put that right at the edge here, making it safe from making it safe from CO2 emissions inside the shed. It's not particularly worrisome out here, as you do have to worry about this being protected. Now, this is intended to prevent the heat from being too much. Now, there is one downside to me doing it out here, and that is I have to give it some protection from the weather. Now, it talks about this sleeve reducing the heat enough to prevent fires. So you need to make sure that this part of the installation is not skipped as this provides you with enough of a dissipation. And then this is basically simply a small muffler. So what we'll do is we'll put this here. And that will prevent that exhaust will blow up and out. Now, it does warn about having this in a kink location. So my intention is, is to slowly rank it up and create a spot where it can be mounted here to where it's safely ejected above the bottom of the shed, keeping it from going in there. Now, it does have the CO2 sensor in there, but I'd prefer to never use the CO2 sensor or at least never have it go off. Once your intake vent is connected and that's running up into the shed, and you put the CO2 sensor where you need it. You have two ways of controlling this device. There is a little screen that's attached here with a controller, and you have the remote control. Now, the CO2 sensor, you can extend with this wire here. And that will allow you to bring that up on the wall if you were mounting it inside a garage or something, up along the wall at a, at a reasonable height in order to make sure that it's good and, and secure and safe. Um, other than that, you simply have to be plugged in. And once you're plugged in, it does have a Bluetooth app that you can log in through also. I have installed it as we went over on, into my solar shed. It just runs underneath here. Exhaust, mount it out somewhere safe. Make sure you install the, the, protect, the protection here to protect it against the heat keep things from catching on fire. That's great. It does come with a remote and it also comes with a control that's right here on the thing. I did learn there is two different modes. There's a gear mode and there is a temperature control mode. So if you push this button here, you can set, once you turn it on, you can see it says start heating. And that means that the gears inside and the heating elements are starting up. It takes probably four to five minutes to get up to good temperature for it to really be heating. Um, but then if you press this button here, and I don't know if you can see that from here. Let me see if I can get this down a little bit closer for you. So if you press this button here, you see it says gear mode. And then if I press it again, temperature control mode. And then from there, I can ramp up the temperature or ramp down the temperature that I want it to run at. So if I wanted it to be, you know, 70, uh, let's see how far down it'll go. That's an interesting question. So 46 is the lowest it can go. So that's good enough for a lithium battery room if you wanted to protect it from it. But let's, because I'm here in Florida and it's still pretty warm, I'm going to ramp it up here into the 90s just to see if I can get this thing to really turn on and, and come on full steam for you guys. All right, so we're going to turn it all the way up to 97 is the top temperature. And then it's under temperature mode. I am going to hit the on button to see if that has any control over it. There it goes. Start heating. Okay. So after I stopped messing with it, I did not hit the control, the uh, button on the remote yet. It just hits start heating as soon as I stopped messing with the controls. So now we just have to wait for it to heat up. And you can see a little symbol there as it goes around in circles as it starts to get hot. And it is 525 according to, 529 according to this. And it's actually 1219 
according to my watch. So I have not set the time on this thing, but that'll give us an idea at 529 to how long it takes for it to actually get uh, blowing full steam. All right, here we are, a little over 60 seconds in. It says 530 on this thing. It's probably closer to 531 or about to be 531. And I hear the engine starting to rev up. You probably can hear it even over the mic, even over the now noise canceling mic I have on. And there is heat beginning to come out of this. So it is warming up very quickly. All right, here we are three minutes in. As you can see, it's 532 on this thing. And uh, I can hear it running very stable. The pumping of it has really stopped and now it's really just accelerating as it goes. And I think it just slowed down. Yep, I can see that it's got an engine light on it now, uh, meaning that the chamber is hot and up to temperature, and it is just running at uh, running to get it up to this temperature that we set. Now, the exhaust that comes out of this thing, and I want to point that out to you, the exhaust that comes out of this thing is extremely hot, and you need to be very careful how you manage where this exhaust comes out. I've got it pointed up into the air, and I do have it running on the with the protective sleeve in order to make this safe for it to sit here near the ground. But that is something that you're going to want to mount, and it does provide screws for you to mount that into a safe place. So now it is running, and what happens is when it gets to temperature, it basically shuts down. So what we'll do is we'll bring this temperature down, and it just announced that it was going to stop heating meaning that it has hit the temperature that it's supposed to, and then it would turn back on and go through that cycle again once it got down to the set temperature. So, looks good. Everything's working like a champ temperature control. This is really nice. You can control turning it off and on from within your RV, within your house, if you detect that it's out there. Um, I suspect that it's Bluetooth, and you probably could even get into some... Um, some um, home automation tools and stuff like that and probably get it linked into home home assistant if you really tried hard enough um, but anyway that is the product i hope you enjoyed it if you're looking for one there are links in the, in the thing below on the there are links in the description below get you a discount um, and if you do get one i do get a little bit of commission but it doesn't change your price one little bit i hope it helps you and i hope you stay warm this winter